Hi, my name is Sid Cowley. I am a PhD student studying plasma physics at the University of York and working for the Cullum Center for Fusion Energy. Today is Friday the 17th of July and I'm here to give you your weekly fusion news roundup. Stories today include 1. Nuclear decarbonization. Government announces 40 million nuclear tech fund. 2. Focus fusion is the hottest idea in nuclear energy. 3. To engineer surprise, radiation can slow corrosion rate in some metals. 4. The mammoth magnets that could help make nuclear fusion a reality. And of course, I have a bonus story for you as well. First up, nuclear decarbonization. Government announces 40 million pound nuclear tech fund. Now, this announcement was of a 40 million pound funding package, 30 million of which was meant for three AMR or advanced modular reactors. Now, an advanced modular reactor is a term in the nuclear industry to mean a reactor with some novel component that presents some great leap in either flexibility, cost reduction, or functionality. Now, since fusion poses novelty in its fuel, 10 million of this fund was awarded to the fusion company Tokamak Energy. The other 20 million was split between the company Westinghouse for a lead-cooled fission reactor and U-Battery for a small gas-cooled fission reactor. Now this comes ahead of the Nuclear Industry Association publishing a report outlining the crucial role the nuclear industry has in the government trying to achieve its climate change goals. Now from this announcement of funding, it's clear that the government agrees with this sentiment. And in particular, Business Minister Nadhim Zahawi said that advanced nuclear reactors have the potential to be a crucial part of tackling carbon emissions and climate change. Even more encouraging from this story is that the government is willing to put fusion at the forefront of this nuclear policy. Now on to story number two. Focus fusion is the hottest idea in nuclear energy. Now this new story focuses on quite a novel way of achieving fusion conditions and the company that's trying to do it, LEP Fusion. And the way they're trying to do it is what's called dense plasma focus. Now a dense plasma focus machine is comprised of inner and outer cylindrical electrodes that generate filaments of plasma. And these filaments come together in the core of the machine, which is quite insulating. Now as these filaments join together, they are pinched and compressed, and eventually what's known as a kink instability forms. And as they're further compressed, the kink instability forms a knot-like structure that LLP fusion coins the plasmoid. Now it's inside this plasmoid, this high temperature, very dense plasmoid, that LLP fusion wants to achieve their fusion reactions. So far, LLP have reported exceptional progress with them reporting that they've achieved an ion temperature of over 2.8 billion degrees. Now, this article in the Asia Times is actually just one part of a series, so please stay tuned for more information on dense plasma focus in the future. Now on to story three. To engineer surprise, radiation can slow corrosion in some metals. Now this article highlights some quite interesting fusion relevant materials research. Researchers at MIT and the Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory tested the corrosion rate of various metals with and without being exposed to radiation. Now molten salt was used to simulate the corrosion that could occur in a fission cooling pipe, for example, or inside a fusion vacuum vessel. Now what the team found crucially was that the metals that were exposed to radiation actually had a slower corrosion rate. This surprising conclusion is most likely due to radiation-induced defects that allow the metal to heal more quickly when exposed to corrosive material. This information is more relevant for reactors such as ARC, which is being developed by Commonwealth Fusion Systems. This is because ARC is proposed to have a liquid wall that could be corrosive for various machine components. Four, the mammoth magnets that could help make nuclear fusion a reality. Now this article, published in Forbes magazine, focuses on the toroidal field coils to be used for ITER. The article is written by Masahiko Inoue, the ITER project director at Mitsubishi Heavy Industries. Mr. Inoue talks about Mitsubishi Heavy's role in producing the toroidal field coils. They should produce about a 12 Tesla magnetic field to help compress and contain the plasma. Now in the article, Inoue highlights the sheer scale of this manufacturing challenge as each of the 18 coils is about the size of a six-story building and weighs roughly 310 metric tons. And despite the size, Mitsubishi was able to insert the field coils with a precision of less than half a centimeter. Now this story highlights that even though ITER is this massive public project, it's had a crucial role in developing supply chains and manufacturing techniques in the private industry that simply did not exist before. Well, that's it for our news stories, and before you go, I have one bonus for you. 
And this bonus comes in the form of a video from Pulsar Fusion. Now, Pulsar Fusion is a UK company working on developing and manufacturing technologies for use in the nuclear fusion industry, such as robotics, diverters, and high temperature superconductors. Now, recently, Pulsar Fusion has been in the news for developing a fusion-based plasma thruster, and they've just released a video showing it in action. Now, if fully realized, these fusion plasma thrusters could reduce the time a rocket takes to travel to Mars by about a half, and that represents a huge leap in the rocket industry. Well, that's it for your fusion news this week. I hope you enjoyed, and if you did enjoy, please feel free to like and subscribe our channel for more content. Also, if you want to further investigate any of the articles mentioned today, their link is in the description. That's all from me. See you soon.